Okay, we're going to take a more detailed look at the eyes group or eyes feature in Fresh Face Effect. And we are in Apple Final Cut Pro, but this would be the same if you were in Adobe Premiere or Adobe After Effects. So I have default Fresh Face Effect applied. I went ahead and hit the Detect button to get pre-tracked motion tracking data for all the frames in this clip. So that's done. For now, I'm going to disable the skin smoothing and enable eyes and mouth. And I'll go ahead and disable this lips parameter. So at this point, the only effect it's having is in the area we're going to be focusing on, which is the, the eyes. And you see that by default, it makes the eyes a little brighter. And let's take a look at these parameters and, and what they do. So eye mix simply mixes the overall effects of anything in this group. Um, eye exposure is what you see there already. It's basically a brightness or exposure control for the entire eye area. Um, these parameters named iris focus on just the iris region, as you'd expect. Um, that's the iris exposure, iris gamma. And with the combination of these, you can get a lot of interesting kind of adjustments to the eye area. Eye saturation really depends somewhat on what the original saturation of the image is as far as how dramatic an effect you can get there. Um, but that's a pretty big difference that we have going there right now. Um, and again, if you, know, you determine it's too much overall, you can sort of just fade it back a little bit with this mix parameter. Now, one thing I really wanted to show in this video is the masking for the eye region. So if I enable this preview masks checkbox, and then I enable this mask controls checkbox within the eyes group, this enables or basically reveals some more parameters for controlling the eye masking. Now, what you see here, what you'll notice is that the eye region is defined by a polygon of straight lines with a handful of points. So it's not a very precise curved region, actually. Now, as you've seen, you can get a pretty nice effect from it, but it's worth being aware that the way that really works is that it's using blending on the edges to give you sort of a smooth result that's convincing. If I, if I turn down the eye blending, or even the the same for the iris, the iris blending. You can see how if I basically go back to the effect now, um, you know, there's more obvious potential issues there and the tracking would need to be really precise. And, and basically it's just not going to, I mean, I can adjust this, this eye contracting thing, but basically really what you want is that blending. That's what's going to, going to give you the best results and maybe you just actually use the default values and hardly ever adjust these is what I would say. Um, but that's important to realize the best results you're going to get with, um, with this eye and the mouth feature to some extent too, is, is more, more subtle effects. Um, just, you know, to use a bit of a cliche to make the eyes or mouth pop a little bit more to sort of you know, not to entirely change the look of the original image, but just to emphasize certain areas is probably probably the best use for these things. Another thing I wanted to point out while here in the eye group, and this actually somewhat applies to the mouth features as well, is you might have noticed this left eye fade, right eye fade controls and wondered exactly what that's for when we already have this eye mix parameter up here. If I do that you can see it has an effect on the it's a way of just fading the overall effects of this left eye and then right eye and what that's there for is if I if I step through here um, this is sort of a made as a very exaggerated effect so the eyes and the mouth effect is very obvious and you can see what's going on here you see that as her hand goes in front that you still see the lips effects here and then the eye effect here on her hand so the machine learning model we're using right now to do the tracking um, does not attempt to sort of detect when the eye or mouth is obscured that way. So that is something we need to handle, um, you know, with keyframing or by hand somehow. So this is in this in this in this version of the effect here. If I scroll down and you can see this left and right eye fade as well as the lip mix. If I kind of step through it, 
you see what's going on. I basically just threw a few keyframes in there and then handled that that version um, or that that issue where the eyes and mouth become obscured by the hands. And you can see you can get a pretty con convincing result. It can handle a lot of these situations. But there are definitely cases where you might want to fade only the left eye or only the right eye. Um, and so that's why those controls are there. And again, it's worth being aware that this is a limitation that you have to deal with um, using the filter parameters here when those face features become obscured or occluded by other objects in the foreground. <laughs>